I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh my gosh, yes, 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 yes. Hello, oh my gosh. It's beautiful, oh my goodness, you guys. <laughs> Holy cow, oh my gosh. Hey everybody, this is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report. And today, we're exploring the dry upland forests of Central Florida on the hunt for Sand Hills specialist reptiles. Let's see what we can find. Okay, under this log, I just flipped something that I never thought I would find in longleaf pine savanna. Oh, check it out, yep. Look at this. Hold on, what is going on? This is an Eastern garter snake. And truth be told, I have absolutely no idea why there's an Eastern garter snake utilizing this habitat right now. We are currently in like the most classic Zurich longleaf pine uplands I have ever seen, recently burned. And I literally flipped them underground under a log. Now garter snakes, while they are typically semi-aquatic, are known to use upland areas occasionally, but it seems like he might have even been brumating under that log this winter, which is just really, really unusual. In the classic garter snake food sources, like little fish, like frogs, none of those typical food sources are probably even present here, and if they are, they are in very low populations. So I have no idea why he's here right now. He is really pretty though. Oh no, buddy, it's okay. He's really pretty. He's getting a little bit feisty with me, so I'll go ahead and put him back. But this garter snake has that really beautiful blue flecking on the dorsal side that a lot of our Florida garters have, which is so fun to see. Still has a lot of growing to do. He could probably mm, about double in size if he ever reached that maximum size for this species, but this is definitely a pretty typical adult. Really cute snake. Don't know why he's here, but really excited to find him. All right, little buddy. Whoa, I'm gonna put you back under your log. Holy, holy cow. Okay, hang on. Here's your log, here's your log, here's your log. Here you go. It's okay. There, look, look, look. Happy boy. That was a really beautiful garter snake to find, but it was not the Sand Hills specialist I was looking for. Just when we were turning back to finish the hike, Allie spotted something slithering through the underbrush, and it turned out to be far more spectacular than I could have ever hoped for. It's still a juvenile. It's not a fully grown adult yet. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh my gosh, yes, 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 yes. Hello, oh my gosh. It's beautiful, oh my goodness, you guys. Holy cow, oh my gosh. No, no, this, can you guys see it okay? This is the coach whip snake. This is one of the coolest sand hill species out here. I can't believe I am holding one in my hand right now. This is wild. Okay, let's switch to the main camera for the rest of this. This is absolutely insane. This is bonkers. I still cannot believe that this is actually really happening right now, but in my hands is one of the coolest Sandhills habitat specialists in the world. This is the Eastern Coach Whip. Now, Coach Whips are really cool for a lot of reasons. For one thing, these are some of the longest non-venomous snakes here in the southeastern U.S., sometimes reaching lengths of up to eight feet long. The other thing is, as you can see, he is super active, very aware of his surroundings, and he has these absolutely massive eyes, two huge eyes positioned facing forward on the front of his skull. And those eyes are his main method of detecting prey. These coach whips, they are highly, highly visual predators. They do also have an incredible sense of smell, like our other snakes, but their main sense that they're using to detect a potential prey item or predator is their eyes. Functionally, these act like giant racer snakes, giant specialized racer snakes, because almost the entirety of a coach whip's diet is actually made up of lizards. The way they eat is also pretty crazy. They are not constrictors. They literally grab things, lift them off the ground, and toss them around until they break their spine. These things are insane. This one obviously is not a fully grown adult. Oh man, whew. And you can see that he's aware of where I am. He knows exactly where my eyes are. And so every time he strikes, he's actually striking either at my eyes or at my hand. And if you, wow, if you are lucky enough to see these snakes in the wild, rarely will you ever see them for more than a few seconds because they are probably just going to be sprinting. Sprinting. You got my hat, why would you do that? Because they are probably going to be sprinting 
through the leaf litter or through the sand on their way to catch a lizard dinner. Unfortunately, like our other Sandhills habitat specialists, coach whips are in trouble because this amazing longleaf pine savanna that they depend on for survival is an incredibly rare ecosystem here in the southeastern U.S. in the modern day because this ecosystem is fire maintained. The longleaf pine trees can't even reproduce without consistent fire. And so prescribed burning in areas like this is what creates the habitat that these coach whips depend on for survival. What an absolute treat to see something so rare and so unique here in the sand hills. And not only that, but get a chance to really get up close and personal. This is really rare, really special, and I could not be happier with this absolutely amazing snake. Okay, everyone, this has been an absolutely crazy cool and totally unexpected encounter. Never thought I was going to see a coach whip in the wild. He has lots of growing to do and he seems ready to go. So we'll sit him down and you will see just how fast they can move. Isn't it climb? Wow, that's crazy. That is even rarer than seeing them on the ground. Wow, wow. Thanks for joining me in this episode of The Wild Report. I'll see you on our next adventure. But until then, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.